Welcome everybody to That Tracks. Today's episode is sponsored by The Lost Bros. More on that in a minute. But first, let's talk about how we tracked our way through some Thanksgiving turkey <laughs> with Tim and Nick. <laughs> did you have turkey Nick? on Thanksgiving? Yeah. Did, did you, you not? No, yeah, we did. We had two turkeys. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. That's a lot of turkeys. I had two and a half pounds of sliced turkey. Mm, that's good. That's it. Not that's a whole turkey. Solid. You yourself ate yeah. two and a half pounds? <laughs> no, no, that's all we got for the entire family. When you say entire family, was it just the four of you? It was, yeah, and our friend. Oh, that's fine. Cool. Because he doesn't have any family down here, so. Like our mutual friend? He comes over, yeah, he comes over every Thanksgiving. Oh, that's fine. That's yeah, cool. plays for like the last three years, I think. Oh, that's special. Very cool. Yeah. Way to so, like be a place for him. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Good you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but... And we just, uh, we played it easy this year. Played it loose and easy. Yeah. We said, Four Rivers, let me have some of that smoked turkey and some fixins. Nice. And that's what we did. That's it awesome. It cost us like $150 or something like that. Wow. And it was done. Yeah. Like we and just had to heat it all of you? Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. There's leftovers. There's, we still are eating it. We've eaten it every day since Thanksgiving <laughs> all the way up until tonight. We didn't have turkey tonight, though. We had... Um, uh, ribeyes. Oh, nice. I had two ribeyes and then Thanksgiving sides. That's my favorite type of steak or ribeye. It was really good. That's my like favorite cut. It was on meat. on Jen's birthday. We went to a restaurant and I got a ribeye and I was like, I kind of want to get these for Thanksgiving too. And we got them just in case there wasn't enough food, but there was plenty of food. So then you had so, you originally to them tonight. Did you grill them? Some other friends. Uh, we cooked them on a flat top, like on a, a cast iron. Mm, nice so originally some other friends were going to come over but they have a newborn and okay. both jackson and oliver aren't sick but their noses are just well, running yeah. yeah they're toddlers so, <laughs> yeah. or young children yeah. that's the way that it is yeah that's very and so actually today was the first day that they're like both of them are not just like dripping snot <laughs> so there's a little bit too much information there but <laughs> It's real life. That's parenting for That's you. That's just the way it is. It's like, I don't know why kids are like this. They're like not they really sick are. at all. They're Boom. totally fine. Next They're minute. Just, noses are running. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. No, that's that's childhood. And honestly, especially this time of year, it's very normal. Last year, Luke and Francie both got the flu for Christmas. And we're, we're like hoping, I don't want any of that this year. I need that to not happen. Oh, yeah. Because no. it kind of was, it put a huge damper on our Christmas plans. Like, we didn't get to be around family and all that kind of stuff. So I'm hoping that that is not the case. But that's awesome. I'm glad you guys had a great Thanksgiving. Did you guys, like, you just stayed home all day? Yeah. We nice. watched the parade in the morning. Yeah. And then we ate food. <laughs> Did you Jackson have pie? played video games. I played video games with Jackson. Our friend played video games with Jackson. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Our friend brought over a pumpkin pie. That was that was what he brought over. And nice he brings over this uh uh Skyline chili dip. Ooh, nice. Pretty good. It's like a He's a big like, fan it's of It's like a five layer dip or something. He's a big fan of Skyline chili. Skyline? Mm, yeah. Yeah. I don't know that he's really a fan. I think it's like you know, if you're from Ohio, <laughs> you eat Skyline chili. Yeah. It's like, that's so just like, what happens. <laughs> it's just like in, ingrained in you. <laughs> like you have to just like, like it. Floridians eat key lime pie. <laughs> yeah. All of them. Or like Gold Star. I think there's like a, a like a rivalry between Skyline and Gold Star. Oh, wow. I think it's called Gold Star. I don't I know what that is. I'm wrong. Yeah. So just another is. chili. Yeah. But by the way, they're not chilies. No, it's not, not real chili. It's not chili. <laughs> it's like topping. It's not chili. <laughs> it's 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 meat sauce. It's spaghetti <laughs> and meat sauce. Yeah. It's not chili. I had it before one of my runs. I think all of before Dopey last year. It was my way of carb loading. And I asked for light cheese and the amount of cheese that continued to come on that skyline chili. I was like, oh man, I don't need this. But it's pretty tasty. It's good stuff. Mm. That's good. I'm glad you had a good Thanksgiving. We were um we traveled. So we were up in Georgia, in Blue Ridge, Georgia, for a few nights. Um, Francie's parents rented a house up there. It was on a lake. The lake was like, the water was like really low. It had like receded significantly. I think they drained part of the lake for a period of time. Unsure why. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know. But the water was extremely low. Um, but it was so cold that there was like 
not lake activities taking place um it got very chilly like one of the nights it was in the 20s um while we were yeah. there um, my brother and... called me on jackson's birthday and they're up in alabama and yeah. they're where I, they were ice skating oh wow I was yeah. like, this is weird. Yeah. It's like, it's more shorts and t-shirts. Yeah. It got cool here in Florida though. It recently, like, I think yesterday it cooled off when we came down. Yeah. It was, uh, it was pretty nice. Yeah. The weather's perfect. It's perfect theme park weather in Florida right now. I'm very excited because tomorrow I'm going to festival of the holidays for work and the weather's going to be perfect for festival of the holidays. And then I have an event tomorrow evening, um, at universal and I'm very much looking forward to that as well. So um but yeah we had a good thanksgiving we had fun it was a good time with the family nice to it was we got a little bit of relaxation and but anytime that you're with the family you want to like enjoy that time together so you end up staying up too late you know and like hanging out and playing games and all that kind of stuff so it was fun but also tiring at the same time and then we drove home right yesterday and what should just be an eight to nine hour trip took like 12 hours going up and 12 hours coming back um just from like stopping and you know all of those fun things so it was fun but exhausting but we had two turkeys and all of the all of the traditional thanksgiving food i'm not gonna lie like thanksgiving food in general is not my favorite type of food right i mean it's nice to have for sure on thanksgiving but i could do without it most of the year and i do do without it <laughs> so. here's the thing about thanksgiving yeah Nobody said that it had to be turkey. No, no, no. It's just like what we do. <clears throat> but like, I would love lasagna on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. I'm giving you permission. I appreciate that. It wasn't my call this time around. But I'm next giving thing... you permission to make it your call. <laughs> for the whole family. You go up there and say, when they say, what are you bringing? You say, I'm bringing lasagna. <laughs> and they'd say, what? And you what? say, that's right. <laughs> lasagna i next year francie and i were talking because we rotate so we do thanksgiving with francie's family one year and then new year's with my family that same year and then we switch the next year and we'll do thanksgiving with my family and new year's with her family we always do christmas at home um but next year we're talking about hosting thanksgiving and so um then i do get to decide the menu if we're hosting at our yeah. house so Maybe it'll be lasagna. <laughs> yeah, lasagna. You should also throw in there some like French fries, <laughs> burgers, hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, hot dogs. Whatever you want. We really like did. Said, we got steaks for Thanksgiving. Yeah. No, we had prime it's rib a... the day after Black Friday. Speaking of Black Friday, we have more to talk about with the Lost Rose. But I wanted to mention also, I got the Meta sunglasses and I am so excited. Can't wait to use them. I already have used them some. It was really nice because like, I didn't realize that they, I mean, I realized that they work for phone calls. They kind of tripped me out. I'm not going to lie. Like the idea of hearing things so clearly without having like an earbud in is a, a very weird experience. Right. Where does the sound come from? It comes from the bottom of those sunglasses. I know, but it's like is... the bar that runs right next to your ear. <laughs> If you're standing I, next to somebody wearing them, you could hear it if it's loud enough. Sometimes, yeah, depending on how loud yeah. it is. But it's a it's a weird experience. The only the only thing is that I I'm I'm having second thoughts about whether I should have gotten the ones that transition from indoor outdoor. Well, I can tell you this: the lenses that are in the transition ones from Meta are yeah. the older generation of transitions, so they take mm -hmm. a long time. Yeah, see, that's, that's, that's what I was worried about, and I'm glad that I, <clears throat> I don't I don't have to deal with that. So, and so we got a pair for my <clears throat> excuse me, my voice just lost there. <laughs> we got a pair for my dad, and we just got clear ones for him, and he uses them. He says like, "Hey, Meta, read what what I see. Like, read this for me." Yeah. So he's able to read menus and things like that that he normally wouldn't be able to read. Yeah. So, well, pretty cool. Pretty I'm cool excited. stuff. Pretty good deals. They had they were marked down, and then if you bought them at Target, you got a ninety dollar Target gift card. Man, and so I I just, just paid full price for them because I didn't <laughs> wait for Black Friday because I got them for my dad's birthday, which is the twentieth. Well, I deduct that ninety dollars from the total cost, so I feel like right because I, I I got that yeah. money back. Yeah, so yeah. I got a good deal. You're going to use that. You could use that money on groceries if you wanted to. 
we ended up we used it for Christmas presents for the boys. So there you go. There you go. All right. We're going to take a break, hear more about the Lost Rose, and we'll be right back. Hey, everyone. Are you ready to track through the parks, repping some pretty awesome T-shirts based around fandom? As if you are, the Lost Pros have you covered with their Cyber Monday sale. One of the shirts that I got during this sale was the Am I a Man or Am I a Muppet shirt? And this is sort of based off of a very popular rock band style t-shirt, but the name of that album has something to do with puppets. So, puppets being Muppets, and then the song from the Muppets movie, Am I a Man or Am I a Muppet? There it is. It works out perfect. Right? What do you guys think? Nick, I know you got some shirts too. Tell us about some of the shirts that you got and what your favorite ones are. Thanks, Tim. This is one of my favorites. It's a Happily Ever After t-shirt. Happily Ever After is one of my favorite fireworks shows of all time. And so I love being able to have it um, in t-shirt form as I walk around the parks. This has been one of my favorite t-shirts for a long time. And it's on sale today for Cyber Monday. So you're going to want to go check it out. The Lost Bros have just been one of my favorite companies and so excited to be able to work alongside of them and highlight all of their Cyber Monday deals. So go check them out. We're going to post uh, the link, um, a special link in the episode description down below if you're watching on YouTube, or we're going to post it to our Instagram story and our Instagram bio today. Um, so if you're watching this on Monday, Cyber Monday, make sure to go check it out. Um, and we appreciate you all. Back to the episode. All right, we're back. So yeah, very exciting. Um, I love the, like I said, I love the Lost Bros so much. I've been a fan of the Lost Bros for quite some time now. Like I love their designs. I love their t-shirts. Tim and I are wearing more of their shirts right now. Mine says, please stand clear of the doors. Um, very exciting. Love it. Got the monorail on it. Um, they just, they have, they're, they're so incredible with their designs. Um, their de designers are fantastic. Um, and Cody and Lex are, are great people. So we're super thankful to be working with them um, for this episode. And like I said, check out their Cyber Monday sale. If you're watching this on Monday, head to the link that is in the episode description and um, go see all the things that they have because there's some pretty awesome stuff. I have to talk about mine, though, because it will transition to a bit of news. Yeah. So this says the lovers to dreamers. And at the very bottom, it says in me. You can't. It's too far down for me to show it to you. <laughs> and it's got a banjo on it because Kermit the Frog. Right. And that brings us to some news that broke right before our last episode came out yeah and we talked about like adding to our last episode but we didn't so we didn't have the time uh we found out that muppets courtyard is officially closing because <laughs> news i think uh, it's like part of the news button now for you to accidentally hit the, wrong, do the one. wrong one <laughs> i'm like it has to be a but it's b it's always b but i'm like i think b is the wrong one um <laughs> So Muppets Courtyard is officially becoming Monsters, Inc. land inside of Disney's Hollywood Studios. And they've said that they're keeping the theater. It still will be a theater that Muppet Vision is currently in. And it'll turn into something else. What that will be, we don't know. People are speculating Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor. I don't know about that. It would be a good idea for that mm -hmm. if they moved it from Tomorrowland to Hollywood Studios and then repurposed that area in the front of the of Tomorrowland and actually filled it out. Yeah. Finished making fit like put something in Stitch's Great Escape and put something in Monsters and Glass Floor. It's a huge footprint for them to do something with at the beginning of Tomorrowland. Um and then we're getting the door coaster and I'm sure two restaurants. Yeah. Because it is they're getting rid of two restaurants. They're getting rid of Pizza Rizzo and Mama Melrose. So yeah. I don't know. And then they also sense. found out that Muppets are taking over Rocking Roller Coaster. Rocking Roller Coaster. Aerosmith is going away. And Steven Tyler said, Hey, wait, I love that idea. <laughs> and they're going to turn into the Muppets. And this one, the Electric Mayhem. This news sent shockwaves around the Disney space. And I know that it's been some time and people have had some time to like sit on it. But yeah, we didn't get the chance to really like talk about it. We actually, and like the two of us haven't had the opportunity to really like talk about it much we texted some the day that the news broke but um you're obviously excited about rock and roller coaster getting taken over by the muppets but disappointed that muppets land is going away or you're fine so with it. i'm not fine with it but 
I have had my time to process it since yeah. D23 because when we saw the model or like yeah. the, the, not the model, there wasn't a model, there was a concept art. Right. It was very obviously Muppets Courtyard. Yeah. I and think not that a very lot of people, but right. there were things that you could see that were Muppets Courtyard. Yeah. It's, it's tough though, because there was a lot of speculation about whether or not it would go to Animation Courtyard, which is not really being utilized a ton right now, especially like Launch Bay. Obviously it's still open. Um, but it, it, I don't know. It, it does seem a little outdated. Like it doesn't seem like what, what could be next on Disney's list of things to like update or give us something, like a new experience there. Um, right. And I don't doubt that something will happen there. I don't think all of animation courtyard because they're putting a lot of effort into this little mermaid show. Like they're going to be updating the show. And I think that that's going to be coming back. And I, I don't think they're putting all this effort into that just to make it go away not long after. Um, but, but I mean, we have our answer. It's, it's clear. It's, 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 it's written like it is going into um, like where everything is that is Muppets. I obviously am not like the biggest Muppets fan. <laughs> and so I am, I, I'm always sad to see something that is original to go. Like it always is, it's a bummer to me. Like, and is, isn't that, isn't Muppets Vision 3D, wasn't that one of like, what was his name? I'm blanking. Jim? Yeah. Hen Jim Henson. Henson, yeah. Um, wasn't that one of his last projects? Yes. Yeah, so that's disappointing. It's, it's, it's a bit of history. So one of Jim Henson's last projects, and um, also it features, and I think it was filmed, and somebody will be able to correct me if I'm wrong because there are people that know a lot more than I do. Yeah. But it was the the finale was filmed at, Paris, Disneyland Paris. Oh, okay. And I think it was filmed before it opened to the public. Oh, wow. Okay. See, there's there's cool little things like that about this area that I like. Pizza Rizzo, like, I can, you can miss me with the food at Pizza Rizzo. I don't, I don't love the oh, pizza. Man, you and of, I have, <laughs> you and I have had that. gotten it. Yeah. You, you like, like it? it? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> you can basically get the same pizza still, though, at Pizza Fari over at Animal Kingdom. So, um, that's true. Yeah. But I, I love the lore. Can't get the same of, atmosphere, though. Yeah, I love the lore of Pizza Rizzo. It's fun. It's it's a good time. Um, but I don't know. I, I will say that, like, I Monsters, Monsters, Inc. is not an IP that I, like, have a lot of emotional connection to. Like, and I think a lot of people my age do. I think that some people a little bit younger than me have more of a connection to it. Um it oh, wasn't monsters, yeah yeah it wasn't like i was i was a kid when it came out for sure but i was a, a little bit older um and so it's not like it's not necessarily my favorite ip but i think they'll be able to do some really cool things with it like this space i think anytime that they take something and, and make it new there's fun and exciting technology that goes into that space and um we already know there's going to be a coaster there and i think a coaster on that side of hollywood studios is going to be great like adding a thrill attraction over there will be fantastic so there was some um issues that were brought up in the uh the disabled community about the fact that muppet vision 3d was accessible to all and yeah. accessible to all ages um, and they're taking that away. And the big marquee attraction in that land is a roller coaster now. Right. Not accessible, right. not accessible to all ages. Well, hopefully what they do with the theater will continue to be accessible to all and accessible to all ages. Even if it's right. laugh floor. And I hope that they do something. If they do laugh floor, I hope that it is as immersive as Muppet Vision 3D was with animatronics and such. I would imagine it will be. I would imagine they will handle that theater well. I, I think, I feel yeah. like that's the case. I also, I think that, um, uh, and, and if that's the case, I don't think that they should do Laugh Floor unless Laugh Floor becomes that much more immersive. Because I, I mean, it's cool, the Laugh Floor is, but I don't think it's the most immersive attraction by any right. means. Um, so I, I don't know. It'll be interesting. I, I I'm interested to see what they do with that space i'm interested to see what restaurants we get like there's a famous restaurant from monsters inc that they could put into this space that would be really fun i think it's called harry Housen's. it's like where uh mike takes the his sushi place yeah mike takes his girlfriend 
on a date there. And so like, I think that would be cool. I think that'd be a, a fun nod to the movie for sure. Um, but we'll see. It'll be interesting. I do. Now that the Muppets are taking over Rock and Roller Coaster, which I personally am not totally thrilled about just because I love Rock and Roller Coaster and I love it. Like, I just have a lot of childhood memories on Rock and Roller Coaster. And like, there's huge a lot Aerosmith of Aerosmith fan over here. No, 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 I'm really not a, an Aeros, a huge Aerosmith fan. It's just the child, it's like my childhood. You know what I mean? Like, I, and I'm not like, I'm like, okay, well, it'll be fun to see what they do with it. And I think that they can add a lot to that coaster to make it that much more fun and exciting. Like, the, the actual coaster itself now is not, it's not as cool as it could be you know, with, with the updated technology that we have, you think about riding, you think about another indoor coaster that we have in Tron and you think about what it's like riding Tron in that indoor space and then compare it to the, like the mark glow in the dark marquees that you go through in rocket roller coaster. Right. And like we've leveled up to for sure when it comes to indoor coasters and what they can be. So I think that they'll add a lot to it for sure. Um, but it'll be interesting. I also, I'm that much more confused about this new villain show that is moving into where the the uh, Cars show was, which has a name now, by the way. It was announced tonight during the uh, Wonderful World of, World of Disney with their holiday special. Um, it is called The Villains Unfairly Ever After. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get why we're getting, getting a villain show in this theater. <clears throat> when the Muppets are taking over Rock and Roller Coaster, they could move Muppet Vision 3D to this theater. Right. It's right Why? next door. Yeah. And and that whole area could be Muppets themed. Right. Why are they I, not? I think that this was supposed <laughs> to be like a, a, a testing ground for some aspects of Villains Land in Magic Kingdom. Yeah, but like, I don't... It feels like you could skip that testing and just make a Muppets area. Give the Muppets fans what they want. Right. Because Muppets fans but if would Muppets be... Muppets are going away and Villains is being built, wouldn't you want to get as much information? Like, which Villains get a big pop? Which, yeah. like, when they come out, who's getting the biggest applause? Are people, like, going to this Villains show? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Should we devote all of our money to an entire land, even though said we're hundred percent doing this? Should we do this? They could change their mind for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm fascinated by the decisions that have been made for sure. But like I'm excited. I think it'll be cool. Uh, I'm nervous about rock and roller coaster. I I'm not a big Muppets fan, so to have the Muppets yelling in my ear the entire time while I'm on that roller coaster is not something that excites me. So it's going to be interesting. But they did. They've I don't said know that they're, they're yelling in your ear. They're probably just going to be singing their songs like Aerosmith did. I just envision when I think of the Muppets, I think of yelling. <laughs> oh, there you go. It's a lot of loud noises. I think of of kind hearted. <laughs> Muppets somewhere over are, the rainbow, or uh, not even somewhere uh, over the rainbow. What is the name of the song? The, the Rainbow Connection. Rainbow Connection. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, you know they're, they're they're you're gonna get moving right along. It's a great yeah. song. Yeah, you might even get Rainbow Connection. You think that there'll be Muppet songs, or do you think they'll pull in celebrities yeah. to pair, like, to work with the Muppets to get like, like not original songs, but like songs that these celebrities have created these like artists have created that like the muppets do covers of like country yeah, bears have, but not we have plenty of well okay so maybe when electric mayhem was on they did do covers of famous songs yeah but then they also have original songs it'll be interesting <laughs> so definitely 100 percent getting moving right along Probably, can you picture this from Electric Mayhem and then maybe like two others? I don't even know which what either of those songs are. <laughs> moving right along. It's all about traveling. So <laughs> it makes sense. Like it's yeah. a, a, they're trying to leave Manhattan or whatever. Do you think that we'll still get the like, like, um, the countdown that we get at the beginning of Rock and Roller Coaster? 
to like yeah. send off. You think so? Yeah, it's still I... a launch coaster. They're not going to yeah. change that. They're not going to do a chain lift. Right, right, right. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what that's like though. I love that. That like childhood Nick has so many memories listening to that screaming in your ear, going ten nine. You just told me you didn't that's at the want beginning in your ear, <laughs> and now you're telling me that the thing that you love the most listening is to a crowd your screaming memory of <laughs> of Steven Tyler yelling in your ear. <laughs> that's at the beginning of the coaster. He doesn't scream the whole time. First of all, second of all, him screaming compared to the Muppet screaming, very different scenario. <laughs> this is the exact same thing. <laughs> Literally, Steven Tyler sounds like a Muppet. What? <laughs> Listen to him. He's like, 10, <laughs> 9, So you can admit eight. that they yell a lot. I appreciate that. That is a Muppet right there. <laughs> I don't know. I'm fascinated. It'll be interesting. I'm, I'm excited to see it. We don't know when any of this is happening. We just know that, like, all they said was, like, you have time to enjoy the current, the things the way that they are right now. You have time to enjoy them, which means it's not happening for a while. So I would imagine they're going to have so much going on with Dino Land. What? 2028. <laughs> when it would breaking open? Ground. Yeah, no, so. breaking ground. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do we talk about the the Lakeside Lodge? We have not talked about it. No, we've we've okay. talked about the fact that like cranes showed up and stuff like that. But yeah, no, it's official. They've made the official announcement. Official announcement. The old River Country location is getting the hotel. Yeah. It's not called Reflections of Lakeside Lodge. No, it's just called Lakeside Lodge. Which is so confusing. And so I don't know why we dropped reflections. <laughs> yeah. But that to me says that maybe uh, it, originally there was supposed to be some tie in to Pocahontas, right? Correct. Like, I think we dropped Pocahontas and we're just having nature. Right. Maybe? But I don't know why reflections has anything to do with Pocahontas. Like, I don't know what that has to do with her. So I don't understand that really. And I'm kind of bummed because I feel like Pocahontas deserves. A little bit more but like the theming looked really cool the concept art i really enjoyed the concept art when they announced all of that originally um and is this it still looks oh, the same doesn't with, it yeah we didn't get a lot like we didn't we just got the outside of the building and the build outside of the building basically looks the same um yeah is is fort wilderness then this is a part of fort wilderness or it's com a completely separate resort completely separate Right, which and I'm super excited about because it's close enough that I could camp at Fort Wilderness and then golf cart over to a new resort, and instead of just eating Trails right. End breakfast, yeah. lunch, and dinner, yeah, go over there and have some food options. Yeah, do we? Is this a DVC resort? It is, right? It was originally when it was Reflections. I didn't. I don't. I know think if it, it is or not. No, I'll verify. I'll fact check that. Too. But I think that it is still a DVC resort. So that's interesting. I don't know. I mean, um, and I'm hoping that I will at this point we will get the connection back between Fort Wilderness and Wilderness Lodge, and I would be able to drive the golf cart all the way over all the way. I'd be able to drive the golf cart all the way over to Wilderness Lodge yeah. and eat at Geyser Point. Yeah, yeah, it's a planned Disney Vacation great. Club Resort. Yeah, <clears throat> Lakeshore Lodge. I'm excited. So what did I say? Lakeside? I think oh, so. Man. Yeah. Lakeshore. That's okay. It's it's both by the lake. <laughs> yeah. But it's literally right next to Fort Wilderness. So I, I wonder, like, where do you park? <laughs> I'm sure they're going to build a parking lot. And then, like, the entrance to How it. How do you will... get in there, I guess? Yeah, that's yeah, what I... the driveway? Yeah. Because, <laughs> it, like, it's so close to Fort Wilderness that I'm just confused as to, like, there's not a lot of space. There's not a ton of space between Fort Wilderness and Wilderness Lodge. And there's roads that cross over between, or a road. i got to look and see. But, uh, like, this l plot of land here that we're talking about. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I would assume that this will also have ferries that will take you to... Um, it wouldn't need a ferry to take you to Fort Wilderness because it's that close. Like, you should be able to just walk from Trails End over to um, to this resort. But it should have a, a ferry. I would imagine they'll have a stop added to take... I don't know. Do you think that the ferry boat will be 
if you want a ferry to like Wilderness Lodge or ferry to Magic Kingdom that you would just get on the ferry that already exists at Fort Wilderness. It'll be fascinating. No, yeah, I think they would build another one. You think so? It's so close. Yeah, well, this is, yeah, this is really confusing. <laughs> because where, I guess, where are you going to get into this place? That's what I don't know. I don't understand it. Because <laughs> I guess they could, you could take like a side route off of Timberline Drive. It's, it's so far away from everything, like from a road. It's so far away from a road, but also right next to Fort Wilderness. Yeah. Yeah, I don't huh. understand. Weird. So there Strange. is like roads that run out where the Stolport is. Yeah. Stolport, short takeoff and landing. It's a runway that's at Disney that they currently use for just storage right now. And I think they do like when you like finish to when you graduate to being like an official Disney bus driver, I think you take your like victory lap down Stolport. I heard a rumor one time that there were, you know, those like bumps in the road. Like yeah. when you are driving off the side, it's like, and it like buzzes your tires. Yeah. I heard a rumor that on Stolport, they installed those that when the bus drivers pass, they drive down Stolport. And then it's like, it plays when you wish upon a star or something like that. Interesting. <laughs> Which I don't know if that's true or not. It was huh. just somebody told me that one time, and I've I, like I've never driven down the Stolport, so I don't know. Yeah, that's interesting. Huh. Well, yeah, more more information I'm sure to come on what that resort ends up being like, like as far as like access to it and what all that means for Fort Wilderness. Um, yeah. It seems like it would be just an extension of Fort Wilderness in my mind because it's of its proximity to Fort Wilderness. It's literally right next to it. Do you think that Fort yeah, Wilderness... Yeah, the Tricircle D Ranch, which is where the horses stay at Fort Wilderness, is in the parking lot of this resort. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you could see it yeah. if you go to Tricircle D Ranch. Yeah. That's what I don't understand. If you take a ferry from Fort Wilderness to Magic Kingdom, you see where the grounds are for this resort very easily and very quickly. So should be interesting. It'll be fascinating, but I'm yeah. excited. I'm, I'm excited to see like what it becomes. And and uh, ultimately it's more rooms on property and that's what they need. So uh, do they? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I've heard that not everything is at capacity all the time. So <laughs> if they want, but like you need to build another park if you're trying to fill rooms too. Right. Yeah. Maybe they anticipate all of these additions to lands and stuff will draw that for people. Yeah, I really they did think... say that somebody asked somebody in like the earnings call or something. They're like, "What do you feel about Epic?" And they're like, "You know, basically like high tide raises all ships type thing." Yeah. They're like, yeah, "We've that... already seen an increase in summer bookings around the time that Epic is opening." Yeah, that's so... what I was gonna. That's what I was just about to say is that I they're banking on the idea that people that are coming down for Epic are gonna add Walt Disney World to their vacation as well which makes sense like I, I think that that's a normal thing that takes place is that like guests of Universal are also typically splitting that time with Walt Disney World as well um, will people travel down just to go to Universal that'll be interesting you know like will people right. come down and make their whole trip about Universal I think that Universal has been smart and their ticket policy for Epic at first sort of forcing people to make that full trip about mm. Universal because they're having to buy those like multi-day tickets. Um, and so that's that's going to consume a lot of their time and they'll be spending that much more time at the Universal Resorts and, and at the Universal Parks. Um, so I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how it all pans out, the Disney versus Universal concept. So either way, it's going to be fun to watch it all go down. Um Speaking of Disney and the future and next summer, we did get an announcement that Destination D23 is going to be happening at the end of August. So they moved up the timeline for this as well, because usually this was like in September, I believe, or later. I don't remember. But I want to say... I believe you. I want to say one year it was even later because it took place... Yeah, it took place while we were traveling in Colombia, I want to say. Uh, which would have been in November. That seems strange. Yeah. But, but I think that's, that was the case because I wasn't able to go. That was uh, That would have been 
three years ago. Um, but anyways, Destination D23 is happening August 29th through the 31st. This is like, so to clarify, if any people have any questions about this, D23 does like an annual convention, if you will. And that convention looks very different every other year. So what we experienced this past year in California is D23, the ultimate fan event, and it's massive, it takes over the Anaheim Convention Center. Um, there are massive panels that took place, which is what we experienced in, um, what was the, the Honda the, Center? The Honda Center. Um, and, you know, it's, it's huge. Thousands and thousands of people go to this thing. Um, and it's it's a big deal. Destination D23 is the thing that happens every other year from the Ultimate Fan Event. And it's it's still a convention, but it's smaller. However, it's supposed to be a little bit bigger this year or this coming year in 2025. Um, yeah. It's happening. It usually has happened at the Contemporary um, in their convention center space, which is significantly smaller than the Anaheim Convention Center for sure. Um, but well, it usually took place in one room, right? Right. Like right. The way that des- the way that Destination D twenty three works is, you buy a ticket, and that guarantees you a seat in the room, and you just go to that room all day, and you sit through every single panel. You don't have to like register for panels or pick which panels you're going to. Right. You go to all of them. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Then and, and so this year, this year it's going to be a little bit different. They've got more room to work with because they're moving from the contemporary over to Coronado Springs. Um, <clears throat> I'm really excited about that. I think it's going to be great and so much more functional at Coronado Springs. It was difficult to get to the contemporary for Destination D23. I only did it one year. Um, and that would have been last year in 2023. Um, and yeah, parking is is tough when you're trying to get to the contemporary because obviously there's not enough parking there to to bring everybody there. You had to park at the TTC and then monorail over to the contemporary, which took some time to get there for sure. Um, and so I'm I'm looking forward to that. I'm I'm looking forward to being at Coronado Springs. Um I I'm interested why they are making these two things like August events. That's fascinating to me. I don't, I don't fully understand like the thought process behind that just because I think it's such a busy season for a lot of people in terms of like back to school season. Um, but I, I'm looking forward to it. Do I think we're going to get groundbreaking announcements? No, like we don't, you, we don't get earth shattering announcements at destination D 23. Usually those announcements are saved for um, the ultimate fan event. But I do think it'll be nice to check in and get some updates as to like what's going on, you know, with projects like Monsters right. Inc. and uh, Villains. It, hopefully we'll start to get a little bit more of an understanding of what those spaces are actually going to look like. So when my friend first told me, he said, D23 or Destination D23 is going to be in Co- Colorado this year. And I was like, <laughs> Colorado? Why is it going to be in Colorado? And then I reread his text and he said Coronado. And I was like, oh, man, that makes sense. But like, they're going to Denver. <laughs> Colorado. Such a random also, place for Also, if you guys are wanting to go to Destination D23, they do have a deal on rooms through Disney, like through D23. They got like a block of rooms there and it was like 200 bucks a night to stay at Coronado Springs. I think they're sold Not out bad. now though i tried never mind yeah i tried to go in and do that after you told me that and when i went in and looked they were sold out for the actual days of destination d23 i think they were available the night before and there was availability the day after but when i looked everything was pretty much booked and i haven't looked to see what it's like booking through disney what that what that situation is so i would imagine that most of it's booked up because people are going to look for the convenience of staying at coronado springs so and as far as like if you have questions about can you get there from other resorts and that kind of thing i have no idea i'm sure they'll start to make i don't know yeah i'm sure they'll start to make that known as it gets closer but i think like staying on disney property is still going to be a win for you if you're wanting to go to this thing for sure so if you can't also can you park there yeah, that's a question. I don't think so. I don't think they're going to be able to like accommodate that much parking, especially with hotel guests. I don't know. Right. I, I imagine the resort itself will be completely booked. And so they're going to need all of those parking spaces for their 
resort guests. There is some con- like convention center parking, but it's not enough for what the crowds will be like for this event. So it'll be interesting. Right. Um, stay tuned for more information on that. Um, other pieces of news. We got to go see Moana 2 a little bit early, and I actually went and saw it again tonight. Um, that was fun. It was fun to be able to sit with you guys. We we both yeah. got invited like through our own channels. So you got invited as the Tim Tracker. I got invited through the theme park dad. And when we got there, they had assigned like everybody seats, and they just so happened to put us together. It's like they knew. Yeah, it was nice. <laughs> it was great. Um, but yeah, loved the movie. I thought it was great. It was good. Jackson... Uh got scared yeah it's he did it's, not like the movie he liked the movie he liked parts of it but he's like i'm not gonna watch that again yeah it wasn't it was more intense than the first movie for sure had jackson they seen mentioned death the fr- so much in yeah. moana too yeah for sure definitely heavier definitely more intense um but but luke and ethan really enjoyed it and they loved it again seeing it for a second time tonight um yeah. they uh, yeah, I do think it's important to note, though, that it is darker than the first movie, for sure. It's like the theming is heavier. Um, and I think that that is a translation because originally this was slated to be a television show. Right, right. And I think that as a television show, you can get darker because right. the environment that you're watching it in is a lighter, more comfortable yeah, and it's situation. broken up. It's not like straight darkness for a period of time. Right. Yeah. And so I think kids would, like Jackson would probably have watched it if it was a TV show. Right. Yeah. Whereas like this one, the like lightning and the tornadoes and stuff, he didn't like all that. Yeah. And then, yeah, that was the the biggest thing that he didn't like was the, the, the tornadoes and the lightning. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously we're saying all of this. Uh, sorry in hindsight but there might be some spoilers involved in what we're talking about well all the the tornado and stuff was shown in the the previews in the previews yeah for yeah. sure um but i do think that um there's, there's been it's it's honestly gotten some tough like reviews from some critics and it's hard because everybody's always going to compare it to the first movie for sure i i think that the first movie is better than moana 2 um, I like the music in the first movie more than I liked the music in this movie for sure. I feel like the songs were more catchy in the first movie. Um, I, it'll be interesting to see if anything from the soundtrack like takes off, like some of the songs did from Moana. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know that they will. Um, but we'll see. I don't think so either. But yeah. Lin Manuel Miranda was not involved in Moana Correct. too. Correct. And and I don't like. I don't want to take away from the people who did do the music for this movie like i still think that some of the songs were great um but i don't think that it deserves the the negative like feedback that it's gotten either because i don't think it's like i don't think it's a bad movie like i think it's enjoyable like i think it's a i think it's a good it's a good sequel in my opinion so so yeah um i think like it, it was not as good as the first movie in my in my mind, but I still very much enjoyed it. I laughed out loud many a times. Like the 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 comedic like what's the word that I'm looking for? The, the comedy comic relief. Yeah. And the comedy that existed in the first movie continued to exist in the second one. Like Maui was funny. Hey Hey is hilarious. Pua was funny. Like there's just like and even Moana, like Moana has sort of like a clumsiness about her that is funny and like there were moments like that as well so yeah. i think it's cool but moana also is like she's a boss you know like she's come into her own you can tell that it's more mature which is why i think the theming is a little bit darker because moana herself has matured a lot from since the first movie so right so um, i did want to mention this which i thought was weird our friends sent us this so wicked has been out for two weekends and globally it has made 359 million and Moana has been out for one weekend and globally it has already made 386 million. It's crushing the box office, which is wild. Yeah. Because I mean, wicked put so much into promotion. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think and Moana, like, Moana did... two is like, go see Moana, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the power of Disney. That's the part of power of Disney animation. And it came yeah. out Thanksgiving weekend and people had time off and they took their families to go to the movies and I don't think that Wicked has been promoted as a family film 
I, although we're going to take the boys because I think it's totally fine for the boys to see it. Um, but Moana is definitely a family film, you know? Well, uh, but yeah, I mean, like you said, Jackson's younger and had a hard time with it in terms of it being a little too intense for him. Um, I think that there will be a lot of younger kids that go watch that movie and they're like, Ooh, that was a little freaky. Um, but I think you have kids like Luke who he was born the year that Moana came out. And so he's grown up with Moana. And so he was, you know, very excited to see it and very much enjoyed the movie. And the, the, the theming wasn't too dark for him and he's eight. So, you know, I think it's, I think it's cool, but yeah, they're crushing it yeah. at the box office. It's, it's definitely doing, doing well for Disney. Um, but I think that's what the brand of Moana carries, you know? So, right. And, and Wicked, while it is absolutely popular, I don't think, like, I think there's a very targeted audience for Wicked. I myself knew nothing about the movie, but because I'm in this space and because I've seen the excitement and the hype about it, I was like, yeah, I want to go see this. This looks exciting. I've seen, this thing is everywhere right now, you know? But right. I, I, I exist in a space where the movie Wicked was very popular. I don't think that that's necessarily the same for everybody out there, you know? So, right. so what so, did you think of Wicked? I freaking loved it. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Actually, I'm it was go. written by the same people that wrote Muppets. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it feels a little different. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. No, no. It was just joking. Okay, I'm gonna say Here's this the... now. I'm gonna put a spoiler warning out there because I do want to get into get into Wicked a little bit. So if you're looking to you haven't seen it yet and you're still looking to avoid like spoilers, I'm going to go ahead and set a timer and give myself that much time to talk about it. And then once the timer runs out, then I will no longer be able to say anything. Are you about were you about to say something that like was Not a spoiler? spoiler. Okay, go ahead and say what you're no. gonna say. I'm gonna get the timer set up. So Here's the fun fact that I learned that <clears throat> absolutely blew my mind. So you know the the song or the, the yeah, the song Unlimited? Unlimited. Yeah. Right? The first seven notes of that are the same first seven notes of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just at a different... I also heard tempo. that there were notes of Somewhere Over the Rainbow in the opening song. Yeah. No one warns the wicked. Okay, I'm giving myself four minutes to talk about wicked oh, he's got a lot to say <laughs> no should i do three let's do three minutes three no minutes. do four minutes i, I want to say stuff too <laughs> okay four minutes so if you are looking to avoid spoilers go ahead and skip ahead for four minutes i'm going to start it right now <laughs> okay so what's your spoiler i and I, I just have thoughts i have i have lots of thoughts i'm kind of frustrated because i've already seen spoilers for part two because i don't know so there's two parts to the movie part one and part two right. and and the way that they've broken it up is where there's like an intermission in the actual musical correct right correct at so, defying gravity yeah yeah so part two i've seen spoilers for and i'm mad that i've seen them i'm so frustrated because like i'm not going to be able to avoid these for a whole year it's going to be everywhere. Because those are spoilers from a 20-year-old musical. Right, right, right. Sure, yeah. But 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 there also <laughs> is like, yeah, no, I mean, I get it. I mean, I, like, it is what it is. Like, that musical's been out for so long. Like, it, it's there. Yeah, I get that for sure. But but I, it's, it's a bummer because there's so many people that are getting brought into this fan base that are like me that are new. Like, not everybody right. has seen that musical. Not everybody's a fan of musical theater. And so, like, people will go watch this movie never having experienced the musical. And now I know that certain something happens with the scarecrow in part two. <laughs> okay. And I'm ticked. <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry. There was a lot of foreshadowing in the fact that he has a whole song about life is, you know, about how he doesn't have a yes. thought in his head. Yes, yes, yes. And there were so many comments made about like, he's been doing a lot of thinking lately. And I was just like, but I, when I watched the movie, I didn't get that. I thought it was just like, doing his thinking so now i'm like yeah, well, no. oh that makes sense that that i did the lion cub like i picked up on that obviously i was like "Ooh, yeah. they're putting a lion cub in the middle of the forest this makes sense but um i'm really bummed and frustrated and i've also seen some spoilers where some other characters potentially could be coming from but i have not seen enough of those spoilers to really like 
grasp that, like where Tin Man comes from. I saw something oh, quick, yeah, and so I you'll I, see more of that. Yeah, I scrolled past it really fastly, half. but yeah, I think I'm, that that has been spoiled for me as well. So I'm excited though because from okay. what I understand, it probably has. But <laughs> yeah, from what I understand, part two gets into the story of the Wizard of Oz that much more, but is giving it from like Elphaba's like point of view. Right. I still have so much to learn about why Glinda and Elphaba's relationship fails. From what I understand, it fails. I don't know. I, I have a lot to learn in that regard because obviously like the movie opens with Glinda singing with everybody else about not like no one mourns the wicked, but she's still very emotional. They're setting this like big thing on fire uh, and it's like supposed to be Elphaba. So like there's a lot for me to learn there with regards to their friendship. The movie itself gave me chills many a times and I cried in the scene where they do the dance. Oh yeah. Ugh, wrecked me. When when Elphaba shows up and feels like everybody's laughing at her. Listen, I was bullied in high school like crazy. And so I related to Elphaba so much in that moment in terms of like everybody picking on you, everybody laughing at you, everybody making you feel like you're less than. I like felt what she was feeling in that moment. And I craved so desperately for someone to stand in the gap for me to step up and do what Glinda did for her in that moment. And even though it feels like Glenda maybe was doing it out of personal gain. I genuinely believed in that moment that she was just there to be her friend. And so yeah, she was, that's how yeah. they became friends. Okay. Hold on. We're running out of time. Hold on. People are about to come back, <laughs> but I, I need more time on this. I knew four minutes was not going to be enough. So if you have, if you have just come, come back from your four minute break, she's green. <laughs> <laughs> I got to give myself another, like, three minutes to talk about this so those three minutes are starting now anyways that scene was super super moving to me and i had tears rolling down my face and i looked over at france and she was just like are you crying and i was like yes i'm crying um that was powerful the movie's ending people have been like weeping at the ending and i get it because it's very moving and it's very powerful define gravity 10 out of 10 so good. Such a powerful moment. She absolutely crushed the vocals in that scene. And nice then to sing all that live. I know later to learn that it was live and that she was doing it while on a harness getting swung yeah, through wires. the air. Yeah. It's just like, what are you talking about? She said that she had to learn like how to sing differently in those for those scenes. But um, I did not leave the theater sad or weepy. I left angry. Like I was so bad leaving that theater because how tra of how tragic it is for Elphaba, like her demise and how people have manipulated and twisted things for her. Again, like I saw myself in her in certain moments while watching that movie because of the bullying that I have put up with. And then to like see how everyone like turns their backs on her. It was just like, oh man, I, I, was, I was ready to run through a brick wall. <laughs> like I was so frustrated Ooh. for her but kind of excited for you to see part two because there's a big spoiler that you haven't mentioned yet so yeah i don't i don't know if i know the spoilers like i said i've got a lot to learn about like i know how it ends for all of them i know she dies obviously we know that from this movie that started in the beginning of the world well. right 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 i know that like i know her sister dies from wizard of oz she a house falls onto her and i i mm. would imagine that that may not be the best news, although her sister was not my favorite person in this first movie. She was very much like not looking out for her sister at all. And that was frustrating to me. Um, yeah, I, I, but it makes me sad thinking about where it could go for Glinda and Elphil, but because I loved how much Glinda stood up for her in that moment and like what their relationship looked like after that, like going back to the dorm room and how close they were. It makes me so sad thinking about, because I think I've seen a spoiler for part two and i think i've seen a moment where like they're fighting <laughs> and so um it makes me sad thinking that they could get to that point so but i i would imagine that the boy that's involved has a lot to do with their demise as well and so i don't know it's gonna be interesting <laughs> i'm here for a journey so 
we'll be we'll have to report back when part two releases next year but um i'm hooked like the 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 storyline was fantastic we want to take the boys and the songs were truly incredible we have been listening to the soundtrack a lot and i love it so the timer is up i will officially no longer say anything about spoilers or plot or anything like that but um I, she's I, green <laughs> i really really enjoyed it it was it was very good it makes me sad that i've never seen the musical i want to go see it but I don't think I want to see, and it's not coming to Florida anytime soon, but I don't think I want to see the musical until after I've seen part two now. Cause I want to oh. like, I want to avoid as many spoilers I, as I can for the next year. So I'm hoping we get to a point where everybody stops talking yeah. about it. And then like, we this go about our tough. lives. Yeah. It's going to be challenging. I mean, I've already been spoiled. So, you know, We'll see. But the thing is, is that I've already been spoiled in my mind, but no one's confirmed that. And I like that. And no one needs to confirm that I've been spoiled. So. I'm going to like steal you away to New York and I'm going to have you <laughs> blindfolded and then you're going to wake up in the theater. <laughs> Why am I watching this? Like, no one mourns the wicked. And you're like, ah, Tim. Yeah, the no. I, I don't know. I, I, I really, really enjoyed it, though. I can see why like where the hype comes from for sure we have i have i could spend we could do a whole dragon doing up here (laughs) we could we could we could probably spend like so much more time talking about wicked but we'll move on from there because i know at this point it feels like old news to people but if you haven't gone to see wicked go see it it's really good you should go see it. it's very good very very good very very good very well done um well last but not least a new festival, not new, but a festival has returned officially to Epcot and oh, you've been able to experience it. So you can talk they more about listen it. Listen to us. <laughs> Our demands have been met. The food portions at the America booth are big. Are they really? That's exciting. Yeah. They are much larger than they were last year. Very cool. Good to know. And they were delicious. <laughs> I love the um, catfish that is there. So so yeah. tasty. I know you're not a fish guy, but I saw Jen posted that she was a big fan. Yeah, and yeah. I did try the Hop and Johns, which were good. Yeah. Um, but I do have to say the biggest disappointment oh, of no. the festival, Communicore Hall. That's what I've heard. I saw pictures and videos, and I was like, I just oh, we keep missing it with that space, and it's such a bummer to me because it's like it can be used for so many things. And why? Like, I saw Spaceship Earth. It looked tiny. It's pretty big. Okay. From the pictures but, that I saw, it didn't look very big. But it looked like there wasn't much going on in Communicore Hall at all. There is so much empty space in uh. Communicore Hall. I don't know why there's so much empty space. It is literally sponsored by an artificial Christmas tree company. And there's like four trees. And they have <laughs> two sections on the far ends showing off their trees and i'm like why are there not hundreds of trees in this room right it should be a forest (laughs) right there shouldn't like literally i could i don't i don't even know i could lay down in the middle of communicore (laughs) hall and people would not be upset with me do you remember what they're like oh there's plenty of room for me to get around him it's okay like snow angels (laughs) you laying down here Do you know the how the tree or the tree trail at Disney Springs used to be when it was like in one section and all the trees were together? Give me yeah. something like that in Communicore Hall. Give me a walk through experience. Right. Yeah. So, and here's the other thing is they did do a light show on the gingerbread spaceship Earth, mm-hmm. but because it's smaller than actual spaceship Earth. It's not impressive, it's which is sad to say. <laughs> yeah. It's I I said that I said people like old people are really gonna like sitting here and watching this. <laughs> because like <sighs> I looked at it and I was like, man, I know that people have Christmas trees at their house that are like more impressive of a light show than this. Yeah. And like yeah. I feel bad saying that because like somebody worked hard on it. Yeah. And like no, but I mean, it's good I'm feedback. Sorry to like, you we don't have to be that. positive about all of the things that Disney does. Like, listen, Festival Holidays, I love that festival. It's one of my favorites at Epcot. And like, the yeah. storytellers, incredible. I think like, um, 
the food is fantastic. I love that. I love the light show on Spaceship Earth. I think that's incredible. Like there's definitely very incredible components to the Festival of the Holidays. Another thing that they have crushed it with is giving us Figment sweater to be able to purchase, to be able to purchase. Right. I think like, like they, they did a great job with a lot of things with the festival. This is all based on my perception because I haven't actually experienced it yet. But um, obviously I've paid a lot of attention to like everything that people have been reporting on. But yeah, Communicor Hall just continues to be a miss. So here's my one bit of advice to the people that made the gingerbread house. I understand that you have sponsorships that you have to uh, like take part in. So there's a countdown timer that's sponsored by Citizen, a watch company. And so they have a countdown timer to this show. But the fact that there's a countdown timer makes the show seem like it's bigger than it is. So like yeah. your expectations get people were like counting down like 10, <laughs> 9, oh, 8. No. <laughs> and then it started and people are like okay. oh sad <laughs> it's uh there's some music playing and these lights are changing Ugh. you know Such so like it just needs to run it just needs to be going yeah you know yeah. like the like light show needs to constantly be happening people need to come up and be like this looks cool and then like <laughs> you don't have to sit for, like you don't have to feel like you should sit for the full three minute show yeah, yeah. you know yeah. And also you shouldn't charge ten dollars for a tiny little gingerbread cookie. Is that the the tile is ten dollars? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's way smaller than the gingerbread that is at Grand Floridian. It's the like same the, exact gingerbread. Right, right. It's smaller. With the chocolate piece. bottom and everything, but yeah. it's a smaller piece. Yeah. And it's ten dollars. Yeah. And then they put some icing on the top of it too. Yeah, but the, the gingerbread at Grand Floridian's like a pretty solid piece of gingerbread. It's like one of the Yeah shingles of the roof yeah <laughs> i don't remember how much it was though do you i know? don't either no and i haven't been mm. yet i'm going this week to go to all the ginger we went things. on jackson's birthday so jackson turned five yeah happy which by the way jackson happy birthday to jackson i know he's an avid listener of this podcast <laughs> yeah he's always listening um <laughs> and jen and so we didn't say wanted... that but last week was jen's birthday too happy birthday to oh, jen yeah. happy birthday jen <laughs> the um for jackson's birthday we took him to the monorail loop nice. to um, play at the arcades. I love it. And I don't know why it didn't cross my mind, but like we went to Grand Floridian first. We got, he was like, I want, I'm hungry. Let's eat pizza. So we went to Grand Floridian, went to Gasparilla Island, mm -hmm. got pizza, then went into the arcade. That arcade's real tiny. Yeah. And then we went and got gingerbread and treats and we ate those on the way over to Contemporary. Mm -hmm. Went to Contemporary. Huge arcade, yeah, massive arcade. The best one. Two almost. claw games right as soon as you walk in that are play until you win. Oh, with oh, nice. duckies and that. balls, and so right. we have like five of these balls <laughs> and like it. fifteen ducks. Um, spent a lot of time in there, and then we also did their gingerbread display, and then we're like, all right, let's go over to the arcade at Polynesian. We got to Polynesian, and I'm like, where is the arcade? And then I went up and asked somebody, and they're like, we don't have an arcade, and I was like. Mm. Polynesian doesn't have an arcade. I didn't even think about that. It didn't cross my mind that Polynesian doesn't have an arcade. They also don't have a gingerbread display. Yeah, and I knew like... that. But but I never thought about them not having an arcade. I guess I always assumed it was in that don't they have like a kids club? They yeah, it doesn't it's like Lilo's Playhouse, but it yeah, doesn't but it's not open. It's not open currently. Yeah. Interesting. Well, maybe the new Poly Tower will have an arcade. Maybe. That opens soon, like in a couple weeks. <laughs> they were still working on it. Yeah, we went by it. It opens on the 16th or the 17th. And we went by it and I was like, you guys, <laughs> you're, there's, there's kind of a lot that needs to be done here. What are you Truly, doing? like two weeks that thing opens. Oh, wow. Yeah, they were still like working on like the, the entryway. Oh, and I was like, where's the driveway? How do we get into this place? That's what I don't understand. Where do you park? Where's I, the parking no lot? one has answered that question. Yeah. Oh dear. That's gonna and be interesting. Like, There's still a lot of dirt around. Are you guys gonna like, Oh dear <laughs> pavement down and some plants or something? <laughs> what are you what are you guys doing over here? Oh man, that's it's awesome. It's gonna be like a cruise ship. <laughs> like, I that's why I'm I have it booked and I'm like, are they gonna I think, am I going to stay in this place? <laughs> like, 
Is this going to be open for me? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, you can uh, take that elevator, but don't take that one because there is no elevator installed there yet. Right? (laughs) Oh, jeez. We'll see what happens. It might be done, you know? They have a way of finishing things. They've always done that. That's the history of Disney parks. Disneyland? (laughs) That's It's in their blood. The way that Disneyland (laughs) opened before the asphalt was done drying and people were sinking into the asphalt and it's their brand. Not everything was open. They live for it. Our brand. <laughs> It'll be interesting. But yeah, we'll... The we'll... fact that I went on the wish after it being delayed and <laughs> they still weren't done building it. <laughs> there was like signs missing. Yeah. Was, Speaking of Disney had... cruises, stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> we might have more to talk about for that, for sure. Um, but yeah, literally next week, stay tuned. <laughs> so... <laughs> Right. We have more we might have more to say. But um anyway, well, this has been fun. This has been real. Um I feel like there was something else that I was supposed to say, but I don't remember what it is now. Well, I'm glad Jackson had a good birthday. Can't believe he's five yeah. years old. That's wild. Time is flying it really by. Was. Stay tuned. We've got all kinds of kinds of fun things on the horizon. I can't believe it. We're in December now, so we're like counting down the weeks until our one year anniversary. For that tracks i am proud of us for doing this for almost a year listen it is not i mean we're we didn't say this at the beginning but we're recording via zoom um for those that are listening and um haven't been able to tell but um well it's also sunday night at 11 o'clock yeah like literally gonna go re- re- edit this and post it and upload it and all those fun things but um you know life has just been very busy and um, it's not always easy to schedule the time out and carve out the time in our schedules to make sure that this happens, but I'm proud of us for doing this. Like, and I, I, I'm in, I've enjoyed it so much. It's been such a blast. Um, and yeah. there's, there's some fun things on the horizon for the one year anniversary. So stay tuned. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for tracking with us. Did you think of the other thing that you wanted to say? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wanted to say thanks to the Lost Bros for sponsoring today's podcast. Yes. Yes, for sure. Make sure that you go check out um, all of their sales and truly they're, they're great people. And also just, I love their shirts so much. I wear them constantly. I, I really legitimately do. Like a lot of times you guys have asked me like on in the comments on the episodes, like, where did you get that shirt? So many times it is when I'm wearing a Lost Bros t-shirt that you guys make those comments. They do a lot of Taylor Swift t-shirts for all the Swifties listening. So go check those out as well. Uh, but yeah. Jen got a, uh, um marie sabrina carpenter crossover i love it yep i saw that they released that and i know that they've done like uh today being sunday they did like a lot of book talk t-shirts um and i think that like a lot of them come from the series what is it (laughs) yeah yeah the court a a court of thorn and roses yeah 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 i've never read it series oh is that one of the books that's one of the books okay yeah I don't, I am Jen not as a shirt and she didn't, uh, people told her about it. And so Francie has started reading those books and she's a huge, like she's hooked. She's like going through these books very quickly. I know nothing. <laughs> what did you I'm say? Not a as... Court of Thorn and Roses? Yeah, I think so. I think that's the name of it. I know that Francie's read like several of the books or a few of the books. Oh yeah. So I guess far. that is a book series, a Court of Thorn and Roses. Yeah. I think that's where it all comes from. Oh, Okay. A court of thorn. That's so. That's what the the acronym. Yeah. Is. Yeah. A C T A. I knew that much. I know nothing about them. <laughs> Actar. That's what because Jen told me about this and I was like, that's a very strange name for a book. Yeah. Actar. But, but people are huge fans, and they, the, a lot of their T-shirts that they've made were inspired by this book series. If you if you like those books, you'll understand what we're talking about and what those t-shirts mean. I have never read them, so I am clueless, but Francie loves them. So <laughs> it's about a normal girl that falls in love with a, a fairy. Yeah. There's definitely fairies involved. Something Francie like said it's very like mystical. And Francie's not usually like a a fan of like that type of stuff like she doesn't love like lord of the rings or 
Harry Potter is too much for her time. Anytime that it's like magical creatures, she's like, nah. <laughs> I'm not into this. But she's been hooked on this book series. So I'll have to give it a try. I don't read. Generally. I, don't, I, I, I wish that I read more. I'm really trying to get through all of the Harry Potter books right now because it's it just helps me when I go to visit the lands to have context for certain things that are not in the movies. Um, but I, I just... I cannot force myself to sit down and read long enough, but I've been starting to do audiobooks, and that's made a huge difference. And you can listen to an audiobook through your sunglasses whilst running. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> win, win, win. But anyway, thank you all for chatting with us. We appreciate you and we'll see you next week. Bye everybody. <laughs>